Great. So it's a pleasure to have you here today to attend uh, this presentation. Welcome once again um, to this uh, webinar presentation. Uh, this is uh, the third of a three-part series uh, that uh, we've been presenting for two weeks now. So we have the first part for the Fronius Product and Solutions presentation two weeks ago. The second part was held last week, and then this is the conclusive part of it. So, and uh, to present this, we have a presentation team today, myself, Sipra Nokolo, the Technical Sales Advisor for Western Africa, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. I'd also like to introduce my colleague, David Mwangi, who is a Technical Sales Advisor for Eastern Africa. He's based in Nairobi, Kenya. So together we will be presenting this uh, webinar and uh, hoping you will all enjoy it and uh, take um, some very good information. So like earlier said, um, it's a three part series. Uh, two weeks ago, we dealt with the Snap Inverter series. And then last week we handled the monitoring options. Then today, the final part, we'll be dealing with the Fronius hybrid and off-grid solutions. So the agenda for today uh, is um, we'll be first of all dealing with the Fronius on pilot and then go through the Fronius microgrid solution. The Fronius PV gen set solution comes next and then we'll uh, treat uh, how Fronius provides uh, support for all the above mentioned solutions. To start with is uh, the Fronius own pilot, which is um, a solution where we can use solar energy even for much more efficient purposes. Uh, this junction, I must mention here that uh, the own pilot might seem a bit new to some installers because uh, it's not too common uh, in uh, especially sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but I would say that uh, for Temperate regions is not too common, but uh, for countries uh, around the Southern African region, uh, where we tend to have a, a, a period of uh, winter, it's uh, something that has um, attracted a good uh, attention. So this might come as um, something that's not too, um, not too new to our installers over there. So, and uh, it serves as um, uh, an opportunity for, all of us to understand or learn how this device works. So basically the own pilot is a device that is uh, used for, let's say, hot water preparation. Uh, how it simply works is that uh, for an already existing installation, it can be retrofitted or uh, in, infused into a new uh, installation. So what it basically does is to channel excess energy from the PV for hot water generation. So it basically controls omic loads. So talking about omic loads, we're talking about uh, heating rods, uh, infrared panels, and of course, uh, electric floor appliances or devices. So this uh, own pilot is basically used to control omic loads or is purely resistive loads as we can see here uh, described. Great. So, and uh, to properly explain how this own pilot can be applied, uh, and of course, for us to appreciate its uh, function and efficiency, uh, we have a, a chart here, a power chart of um, an installer or a client without the Fronius own pilot. So, as you can see, uh, the path colored, the patch colored here in gray is the power consumed directly. And then the green colored uh, region is the power sent to the grid. So, and as we all know, uh, the rate at which uh, we buy from the grid is uh, definitely higher, sometimes two times or more, higher than uh, the rate at which we pump or send to the grid. So why not use this power and then consume it? thereby increasing our self-consumption and, of course, uh, uh, independence per se. So, 
by the time we implement the Fronius Home Pilot, this same chart is going to look like this. So as you can see, uh, the dark gray still represents the amount of power consumed directly. And then this light gray colored area here represents the power channel to the home pilot. And then we can see that uh, there's a small region compared to the last chart um, of power channeled or, or sent to the grid. So this, of course, increases self-consumption. So we're now going to look at the structure of the product. So um, to start with, uh, some conditions need to be satisfied. Uh, to efficiently use the Fronius own pilot, it has to be connected to an inverter that has the Fronius Data Manager 2.0 with software version 3.8.1 and above. And then for the Fronius Simo Hybrid, the software version has to be 1.1.8. Point one, sorry. And then a Fronius smart meter is, of course, necessary. Uh, the Fronius smart meter, as you could remember, was uh, also treated last week. So this is a bi-directional smart meter that measures production and consumption. So this, in turn, communicates with the inverter and then uh, helps the inverter to channel uh, the excess PV power to the own pilot. And then uh, for the functions, um, we have uh, three main relays in the own pilot that uh, switches on demand or with respect, with, with respect to the power demand. So uh, the, first, um, the first relay is a stepless relay that uh, controls, steplessly regulates power from zero to three kilowatts. And then uh, for Power demand greater than three kilowatts, relay two is turned on. And then subsequently for um, power demand greater than six kilowatts, relay three comes on. So that's basically how it uh, functions. We will be looking at the wiring subsequently in the coming slides. So um, on the own pilot, this is basically the display you have. So uh, we have uh, LED, LEDs, three LEDs, the green, blue, and the red. So the green basically stands for the status or mode of the heating source. The red or uh, blue LED stands for the connection status. And then the red LED uh, basically uh, represents uh, error. So in case there's an error, maybe in communication, the red LED comes on. Then we have one single button for control, one single bu uh, control button. So um, it is um, a push button that can be pushed once, twice, or thrice to implement uh, the respective functions. So uh, for the first function, if you push it once, it uh, basically opens up um, the Wi-Fi protected setup, which is the WPS. Uh, if you push it twice, it uh, gives you the access point or opens up the access point to the home pilot. And then if you push it three times, it enters into boost mode. Uh, boost mode uh, simply stands for in a case where you want to supplement or, or complement uh, the PV power with the grid power. And then for the person, of course, ends all the mode. And uh, here you have uh, the web user web user interface, uh, how it looks like. So as uh, earlier explained, you can have your error status, the temperature, and of course your power output. And then of course have your respective heating elements and faces, and uh, have a detailed description, both for communication, uh, timestamp, and of course uh, the controller output. Yeah, so that's for the home pilot settings. Then for the general settings, here you get to uh, assign the designation, um, choose if it's going to be controlled automatically or manually, if it's a single phase or three phase device, and of course the designated power. And then uh, uh, you can as well have the opportunity or uh, capability of switching on uh, another heater, or if you're using just one, you can just go ahead and use it. And then for the network, uh, there are basically three main um, modes of connection. You can either use uh, the mode bus uh, 
RTU, VL RS485, and then you can have a, a LAN connection, either a wireless LAN, that is Wi-Fi, or Ethernet connected cable via RJ45 uh, terminal connection. So depending on the one you want to use, you can as well uh, enable them and then use it subsequently. For the IP address, it's always 192.168.250.181. So once this is done, uh, you can now save and then connect to your device. So uh, this uh, is basically an, is an SLD, a single line diagram of uh, the basic function, uh, just a demonstration of how uh, it operates. So let's say you have um, your PV generating 1.5 kilowatts or 1,500 watts as uh, stated here. Uh, and uh, your load is consuming 1,000 watts or 1 kilowatt. So basically, you have um, 500 watts excess that uh, can be conveniently uh, sent to the grid. Uh, of course, this is meant for regions where you are allowed to send to the grid. Uh, for Nigeria, for example, we are not allowed to send power to the grid, so you can as well uh, consume this, uh, have this. Uh, set the, the Fronius map, it's a set on zero feet in. But for the case where you can feed into the grid, of course, uh, you can just uh, um, have this extra 500 watts that would have been channeled to the grid now, you know, used or sent to the Fronius home pilot, which now triggers the heating element. And then this extra energy is now used to warm or to heat up uh, water. And then, of course, this uh, in turn is used for hot for water heating. And then, of course, we can now use the hot water for uh, whatever purpose we want to implement or use it for. So that's basically how it uh, functions. And as you can see, we can uh, connect the Fronius home pilot to the inverter via uh, hardwired, via LAN cable connection, or via uh, Modbus RTU, or of course, via wireless LAN. So, um, uh, like I told you, we're going to look at uh, the wiring of the Fronius home pilot. So this is basically how it looks like. Uh, the data communication, for data communication, um, this is a hardwired uh, Modbus RTU connection. Uh, we had RS485 terminal connection. So you have your D plus, D minus, and ground connected to the data manager of the Fronius snap inverter, and then uh, have your Temperature sensor, usually a PT1000 device connected to uh, the boiler or a hot water tank. And then coming to that for uh, uh, control or data communication cable or uh, data communication. Then when it comes to the power cabling, uh, this essentially represents um, a single phase connection. So for this single phase connection, uh, you, of course, you have your your grid coming in here or your power coming in here. So this is a single phase line one or L1 is connected and then your neutral and of course your ground. Now L1, as you can see, is connected via an, a regulated uh, power and then this can be steplessly controlled and then of course uh, connected to the heater from this output point, as you can see. So in a case whereby we have a three-phase connection, it of course means that R2 and R3 will be connected. Okay, so in terms of uh, heating rods, of course we have uh, recommendations on our data sheet on our webpage for heating rods, but of course we're always uh, open to other third party heating rods. Just uh, to note in this case that uh, the neutral point must always be connected. So for the single phase, uh, the power capacity is a uh, three kilowatts and then three phase is uh, nine kilowatts. Always make sure that the neutral point is connected. And uh, as this is done, uh, since this is a purely resistive load, of course, it entails that uh, it generates a lot of heat. So we should uh, ensure that uh, there are no active electronics around it because this might lead to interruptions and of course might in turn heat up or char the electronic device. 
Okay, so in terms of reference, we have one here for you and uh, with uh, the respective data. So this installation is done uh, in Austria, Ebestatzel. The size of the installation is uh, 4.6 uh, kilowatts peak, that's PV. The annual yield is 5.6 megawatts R. And uh, of course, the solution component installed were uh, Fornius Simo 4.5, three phase, and of course, an home pilot. But the remarkable thing about this installation is that with this, they were able to achieve a self consumption ratio up to 85%, which is really, really uh, uh, good and great. So um, that was for the Fronius um, home pilot. So um, I'd like to say here that there are, this is uh, basically uh, a hybrid and off-grid, of course, backup uh, solution webinar. So it kind of gives us an overview of uh, the respective solution we have in this, in these regards. So it's just to tell you that uh, we're going to have, of course, we have uh, dedicated uh, webinars for the respective solutions that we're telling you about today. So in case anything is not too clear, we, we just uh, stay tuned. We will be presenting dedicated webinars for the own pilot, a microgrid solution as we have here, and of course for PV gen set. So uh, we delve into the Fronius microgrid solution. So basically for off-grid and backup solutions, we have uh, two main solutions. That is the microgrid or the AC coupled solution, like we always call it, and then the PV gen set solution. So to start with, uh, we'll go uh, through the microgrid uh, or AC coupled solution. And uh, to better understand AC coupled systems, um, it's best to start from DC coupling. So that gives us an idea uh, how the AC coupling is implemented. So um, for most uh, installers, um, this basically comes in as the sort of a, a template that um, most installers understand, especially in uh, Western Africa, especially places where uh, you don't have a constant um, grid supply. So this is basically how a DC coupled system looks like. So you have your PV system uh, connected to your charge controller, to your battery, and then connected to your inverter charger. And then this now gets connected to your load. So that's basically uh, the steps taken to implement a DC coupled system. So with this in mind, we'll now take a look at how the AC coupled system looks like. So this is it. And uh, if we compare it with the last slide, we can see that the charge controller is no longer there. And then you have your Fronius inverter coming into play. So this uh, basically tells us that for the Fronius uh, string inverter, PV inverter, uh, it already has a charge controller embedded in it. So this in turn now means that from the PV, from the module, we can, of course, connect directly to the load. So you can power the load directly from our inverter. And then if you have a storage, you can now charge the battery via the inverter charger. Then in the case where uh, you have maybe an overcast or low irradiation and your battery is uh, low or below the threshold uh, operating point, you can of course uh, implement or power your load via a generator and as well charge the battery. So that's the AC coupled system for you. Then we now have what we call the AC-DC combo or AC-DC coupled system. So for the AC-DC coupled system, you have part of the PV uh, modules uh, connected via a charge controller. This now gets connected to the battery and then of course uh, gets connected to the inverter charger and then connected to the load. Still the same thing happens. Uh, the PV inverter, the Fourier inverter, of course, powers the load directly from, uh, from the PV system. So the significance of this AC-DC coupled uh, system is that in, uh, in times of um, black start, as we would call it, uh, black start usually is uh, when you have overcast or 
maybe at night time and your battery is flat. The fact that um, the PV inverter or the furnace inverter uses uh, the reference or the AC reference and frequency to operate. If the battery is flat, then that means your inverter, your inverter charger is also down and cannot operate, thereby not providing the necessary uh, signals for the PV inverter to function. So when this happens, um, the, in, the charge controller in this case comes in uh, and then when we have uh, irradiation, sort of, if we have irradiation, then uh, the battery can now charge to the threshold point from the charge controller. And then this now helps to start up the inverter charger, produces the necessary signals, the AC signals for the PV inverter to start up. Invariably, we can uh, duplicate this function by using the gen, the gen set here. So meaning that if you have a black start condition, you can use the generator to charge the battery up to the threshold point and then have your system back on. Great, so let's talk about energy flow. So the energy flow, as we've seen in the previous slide, is basically as uh, explained in uh, these two uh, illustrations. So we have uh, irradiation from the sun, the sun hits the modules and the modules generate um, electricity, DC power. This is converted to AC power with our inverter and then the load is supplied directly. Then uh, once the load is supplied, uh, any excess from that load is now channeled to charge the battery via the inverter charger. And uh, there's always optimal interaction between the PV inverter and of course the inverter charger to ensure optimal charging of the battery. In a case whereby we have um, overcast or low irradiation, what happens is that um, in this case, we'd have low power coming out from the inverter, then this would definitely be complemented by the battery via the inverter charger. So as to supply optimal load to the load point. So this slide here will discuss a reduction of AC power. So why do we need a reduction of AC power? Yeah, so it's basically simple because in a case where we have high irradiation, maybe on a very, very sunny day, uh, our inverter have power factors of approximately one. So meaning that whatever enters here comes out as a full power conversion. So it supplies full power. Then in a case where uh, the load demand uh, from the load point is low, it of course channels the rest to charge the battery. So, but in a case where the battery is already full, there has to be um, um, a signal or an operation to help save the battery that is stopping the battery from further charging. Because uh, if uh, it continues to send in current, this is definitely going to affect the battery cells and then in turn reduce the battery life or of course uh, damage the battery. So um, there is this optimal interaction between the phonius and inverter charger that helps it to automatically reduce the AC power such that the battery is charged optimally. Meaning that once the battery level, the SOC or the state of charge of battery is low, it charges the battery optimally with the needed uh, charging current. Then if the battery is full, it of course reduces the, the AC power, which in turn reduces the charging current being used to charge the battery. So this is what is described as reduction of AC power. So, and of course described here in this second illustration, if we have a very sunny day, high irradiation, um, with the communication between the, the uh, inverter and the inverter charger, when we notice that the battery is full, what the inverter charger does is simply to increase its frequency. So once the frequency is increased, that serves as a signal to the phonius inverter that the battery is full, and then what it does is to automatically reduce the AC power and then supplies the load exactly what it needs. So we now use uh, this um, graphical illustration to explain what we mean by this uh, 
uh, power reduction. So it's called frequency controlled power reduction. Frequency controlled in the sense that uh, we use uh, the frequency to communicate between the inverter charger and the furnace inverter. So at full battery, the inverter charger increases the AC frequency from 50 to approximately 54 hertz or 53. So once this is done, uh, the furnace inverter sees it as a signal or command to reduce its AC power. And as you can see in this illustration, as the state of charge increases or tends towards 100%, the charging current definitely drops down to zero. So with increased AC frequency, the PV inverter reduces the feed-in power. So why Fronius Victron or Victron Fronius? Yeah, this is as a result of several years of strengthened partnership between uh, the two uh, Fronius and Victron, uh, we have very uh, well adapted uh, technical uh, um, commitment. So we have technical adaptations that are implemented during uh, the installation and commissioning of the AC coupled or microgrid solution, which makes it very, very easy for the installer to do so. On the Fronius side, all that is needed to be done is to activate or set up MG50 or MG60. MG basically means uh, microgrid, while 50 or 60 means uh, the regional operating frequency. So if you're using 50 hertz, you implement MG50. If you're using 60 hertz, you implement MG60. So once this is done on the Fronius uh, inverter during a uh, setup, that's all that needs to be done. And then on the Victron side, the implementation is done on the Color Control GX, which is a display and control device from Victron that is used uh, for the implementation and commissioning of uh, the micro uh, grid uh, setup. Then we have this uh, amazing technical support commitment. It is uh, a very complementary uh, support system in that uh, inquiries coming from uh, uh, the, 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 the Victron connected uh, inquiry can, of course, be sorted out from the Fronius angle or from the Fronius end, and of course, vice versa. Meaning that if you have an inquiry uh, or you have a service case on your Fronius and you contact the Victron technical support department, they will attend to you as if it was their inquiry. And then this is also done vice versa, but which is which makes it a very very a laudable complementary support system. So if you want to learn more about uh, AC coupling, you can as well follow this link and then it will take you directly to the web page where you learn or get all the information you need on AC coupling with uh, Fronius and Victor. So we shall now delve into data visualization. So uh, this will be handled by my colleague, uh, David, Wangi, but before he takes over, I would like to um, launch uh, a poll. Yeah, so I would like to uh, launch uh, two poll questions just to get your feedback. Uh, yes, so I'd like to launch the first one, which it uh, says, uh, do you have experience with PV hybrid and uh, off-grid or backup systems? Uh, yes, either yes or no, if you have uh, an experience uh, in PV hybrid or off-grid or backup systems, and uh, no if you don't. So I'll leave it for a couple of seconds before I go into the next poll question. So uh, keep your answers coming. OK, so um, I think we've taken enough answers. So I'm going to share the answers I've gotten. Yes, so 64% says yes. 
They have experience with uh, PV hybrid and off-grid backup systems, while 36% uh, says no. So, which is um, which is also good because uh, this serves as a, an opportunity for them to learn uh, of uh, these possibilities and how they can implement PV hybrid and uh, off-grid, uh, of course, backup systems. So, um, I'll now like to ask the second poll question. Now, the second poll question, I'll launch it now, as you can see. Yeah, so the question is, which Fronius hybrid and off-grid solutions are you familiar with? So is it the own pilot? Is it the microgrid uh, AC coupled solution? Or is it the PV genset, which will uh, be discussed by my colleague, David uh, Wangi, subsequently? So just in case, um, yes, it's uh, we've not treated the PV genset, but just in case if you have experience in it also, you can, uh, of course, uh, indicate. So I'm going to leave it uh, for some time now, for some seconds before I uh, take the results and um, share it with you. Okay, so I think I've um, taken a good number of response. I'll now share the response with you. Aha, uh -huh. so we have 31% uh, being uh, conversant or 31% of you have uh, experience or with um, or familiar with uh, the microgrid or AC coupled system, 19% to the PV genset, 50%, wow, none, no experience with them. And then uh, zero own pilot so yeah so um which is indicative of uh, what i said uh earlier it's a device that's not too common but then of course uh, there are regions in africa especially the southern african region where they are of course used so thank you Oh, okay. I uh, just discovered that I didn't actually share this uh, result with you. So yeah, so there you have it. 31% uh, um, of our or how are familiar with AC coupled systems, 19% um, PV gen sets, and then 50% non, and then 0% um, on, on pilot. Yeah, so sorry for not uh, posting that earlier. So as you can see, um this webinar is actually an opportunity for those that don't have experience with it to really um, uh, have all the information that they need in this regard yeah so that with that i come to the end of my part of the presentation uh data visualization will be handled and of course further topics will be handled by my colleague david mwangi so let me hand over presentation rights to him as uh, he continues with the presentation. So, uh, David. Yes, uh, Cyprian. Um, thank you very much for the first part of the presentation. So I'll now be taking you through the second part of the presentation and we will be starting with the data visualization, and this is for the microgrid solution. Um, so, because as you know, with any PV system that you're doing, uh, being able to monitor is one of the most critical aspects of your installation, because this allows you to know if there are any issues with production or if your system needs some sort of service uh, because uh, the last two webinars that we've done we have uh, been mentioning about the state codes that the Fronia inverters are able to set regarding uh, any faults that you may have in your system 
but for you to be able to do proper monitoring then um, you of course need to commission the data manager in the Fronius inverter and this is done through the configuration assistant once this is done um, then the connection will be through the Wi-Fi router for internet and this also happens with the Victron uh, system that is also connecting through the Wi-Fi uh, internet uh, connection and both of these are then going into the internet and sending data to the respective monitoring platforms and for the inverter charger from Victron then you're going through the VRM portal and for Fronius you will have your data displayed in the Fronius SolarWeb. Um, as there is no meter in most cases installed, no smart meter in most cases installed for microgrid setups or AC coupled installations, what you'll see in SolarWeb is uh, basically your PV production data in most cases and also um, any state codes like I mentioned before for any faults that might be there in your system. Um, in terms of the Victron uh, on-site display, and this is why uh, the collaboration between Fronius and Victron is really good, is the fact that in the color control display of the Victron system, you can directly see quite a number of uh, system parameters. In this uh, display here to the left, we can see what is the AC input from time to time. Uh, you can see the battery state of charge and the voltage as well. You can see what the AC loads are consuming at that particular moment. And importantly, uh, the integration with the Fronius inverters comes and you can see what the Fronius system is doing. And this is basically on every phase. So you can see a total of three phases here with the respective outputs per phase. Additionally, if you have several Fronius inverters in the system, you can scroll between uh, one inverter to the next, and you can see also per phase what each inverter is giving you. And if there are any error codes encountered uh, in the Fronius uh, PV inverters. Uh, and this is important uh, because even without, for instance, going to SolarWeb, or getting a notification via email, if you are on site, you can scroll through the display of the Victron uh, unit and be able to know if the system is working optimally. Um, let's now look at what are the commissioning and design rules for the AC coupled system. Um, and for this, we start basically with uh, the installation of the system itself, then you'll do your cabling and then the, com the commissioning phase comes uh, after that. Once you've done that, the cabling and all that, then you have to configure the Victron uh, part of the system. And uh, for this, we would recommend uh, also getting in touch with your relevant uh, Victron contact persons so that if you have any sort of questions uh, that you need uh, assistance on, then you can get it directly from the concerned Victron people. Although we have quite a number of online resources where you can get a lot of information on the AC coupled uh, configuration. So the commissioning, of course, uh, the final stage is where you come to set up microgrid. And this is important when you are now commissioning the Fronius inverter, you go to the setup uh, menu of the inverter. You can access this on the inverter's display. And it's important that you select, depending on your country uh, grid frequency, you select either microgrid 50 or microgrid uh, 60. So this basically allows the Fronius inverter to be able to communicate by frequency with the Victron inverter chargers. Because for the AC coupled system to function, you do not need any hardwire connection between Fronius and the Victron inverter chargers for communication. So the regulation is all happening via frequency. Um, the design rules, um, a few things that you have to bear in mind is that number one, the ratio of the PV inverter to the inverter charger must be one to one. And this is when you have your uh, PV inverter connected to the AC out of the um, inverter charger. 
So for cases where the PV inverter is connected to the input of the inverter charger, then this ratio does not play a critical role. And therefore, you can have as much power as you can connect to the inverter charger input. And then, of course, uh, we do allow on the DC side the system to be overdimensioned. Uh, but, but of course, depending on the inverter you're using, the, the Fronius inverter you're using, you please have to take uh, care of the allowed overdimensioning uh, factor. So it could be 150 in some cases, in some cases 140%, and also for our primal series of inverters can go up to 200%. As I said before, uh, the microgrid setup, this is a, a special country setup for microgrid uh, solutions. So this is storyline regarding uh, voltage and frequency limits. And therefore, uh, in terms of voltage and frequency, it's working on a wider range of both than the normal, let's say, grid tied installations. And of course, the frequency shifting is allowing uh, power reduction depending on the state of charge of the battery. Uh, in terms of planning and support, Fronius will offer you uh, the kind of uh, support to allow you to get the right kind of inverter the string configuration and all that. And for this, we do have a, an, a free online tool for designing of the strings and the selection of inverters that we call the, the solar configurator. And you can access this through the Fronius SolarWeb monitoring portal. So as far as the batteries are concerned, we do not give any recommendations because this is something that is going to be connected to the inverter charger. And therefore you have to design the batteries or the battery bank uh, depending or based on the recommendations from the inverter charger manufacturer. Um, next, let's look at uh, a summary of what we've talked about regarding the AC coupled system or the AC coupled microgrid solutions. Uh, in terms of the Fronius inverters, you can use all the Fronius inverters. Uh, we are talking about the Simo series, the Primo, the Echo, as well as the UL for the US market. Uh, it's important to always make sure that when you have an AC coupled microgrid solution that you activate the special country setup. This means micro 50 or 60, depending on your grid frequency. And this, uh, of course, now allows the frequency shifting to work. Um, other than Victron, we also have quite a number of other uh, inverter charger manufacturers that we have tested compatibility, uh, uh, for instance, the Studa and so on. But this uh, AC coupled uh, solution is thoroughly tested with the Victron Quattro as, the Vic as well as the Victron MultiPlus. And therefore, that is why we like to talk about uh, the collaboration between Fronius and Victron, because these are thoroughly tested uh, solutions. Um, in terms of uh, reference projects for AC coupled installations, we have quite a number of them. So if you are thinking about uh, this kind of, of a solution for your customers, do not worry about uh, if these are, are solutions that are already working in the field. We have thousands of them already working across Africa, for instance. Uh, one case example here in Kenya, we have an installation of about 100 kilowatt peak. As my colleague mentioned before, it's possible to do both AC and DC coupling. So we see a, a bigger portion of this installation at 80 kilowatt peak is AC coupled, while the remaining part of 20 kilowatt peak is DC coupled. So in this solution, uh, we of course have about uh, 80 kilowatt of Fronius inverters connected. And a special feature is the fact that this is an installation with 100% self-consumption. So because this is uh, in the middle of uh, a, reserve, a game reserve here in Kenya, and there is no access to any other source of power and other than the microgrid solution or installation. Um, another further example would be an installation uh, in uh, Spain. And this is for a serial uh, manufacturer. Um, so the total installation here is 82 kilowatt peak on the PV side. We have three SIMO inverters and uh, a number of quattros. So these are six quattro tens. So this is bringing uh, a total of uh, 60 kilowatt on it. Um, additional feature here is the integration of a genset. 
Uh, so this allows, for instance, for you to have a smaller battery bank or a smaller energy reserve uh, storage. Therefore, you can mitigate on the cost of storage because storage, as you know, is one of the biggest costs uh, in a PV installation. So as I've said before, uh, if you're thinking about uh, doing a microgrid solution or AC coupled installation, anything starting from 20 kilowatt peak on the PV side is already making sense for you to do an AC coupled installation. So if you have, uh, if you require any reference uh, installations, we are very happy to assist you with all the details you might need. Um, let's now get into the Fronius PV genset solution. So this is one of the other possibilities to provide uh, PV power in off-grid installations in sort of a grid-tied configuration. So uh, the scheme of the PV genset solution uh, looks something like this. So we have our uh, PV inverters here. Of course, they're getting DC supply from the PV array. And then you have the diesel generator that is primarily providing uh, the loads with AC power. So the AC output of the Fronius inverters and the AC output of the diesel generator is combined together for you to be able to feed the loads. Um, in terms of um, why the PV genset solution, I think the biggest motivation for doing a PV genset installation is the cost savings that are possible over a period of time. Um, as you can see here, we have two comparisons, although we do not have the actual figures indicated, but this is the representative of the initial investments that are required for uh, the PV uh, system, which is represented by the red line here, as well as the genset uh, solution that is represented by the gray line. When you are installing the generator system, of course, the cost is much lower initially compared to the PV solution. But over time, because of fuel maintenance and all that, the cost of the genset actually increases. In contrast, when you do your PV installation, you start with, an high, with a high uh, initial investment, but over a period of time, because there is no maintenance and you're getting free energy from the sun converted by the solar panels, then the, the cost compared over time is decreasing in the solar system. And so therefore, when you compare the two, the gap between the gray line and the red line here would represent the potential savings that you can make. And therefore, this is a system that can be profit profitable for all, as you as the installer for the ed customer and the PV industry as well, to encourage uh, in increased uptake of uh, PV installations. Um, going further, um, of course, it's important to understand once you are talking about costing of the PV genset installation, what are the kind of payback periods that we are looking at? So, um, of course, you have to identify a real business case. Uh, so for places with high irradiation, uh, like most of Africa or the tropics, then a PV genset installation makes a lot of sense. Um, the annual PV uh, output uh, on load would be in the region of 800 to 2,000 kilowatt hours per year, and this is really high. And the payback period would be influenced by things like the cost of fuel, which as we know is not very stable in the international market. Sometimes it's low, other times it's very high. Um, but typically you get a payback period in the region of approximately five to six years when you integrate PV into a genset system. So we can see here, um, when you start, you are operating nearly in the negative zone because this is money that you're taking out of your pocket to invest into such kind of an installation. But over a period of time, in about five years or so, you are breaking even on your PV installation. And therefore, there is overall, over time, a cost reduction as well as a risk reduction in terms of power availability and all that in your system. Um, to understand now uh, another important aspect when you're integrating PV power into a diesel genset uh, installation, we have what we call PV penetration. And we basically now talk about high or low PV penetration. And in this case, we start with what we call low PV penetration. 
So in this case, um, we can see quite a number of things here. Um, the dark gray portion, this is what your load is taking away uh, over a period of time. And the gray portion, this one here, is what your generator, diesel generator, is able to supply you with. And then, of course, the pink uh, here area is what your PV installation integrated into the genset is able to support you with. We are calling it uh, a low PV penetration scenario because if you look at the peak load here, we are talking about approximately 1.6 megawatts of load. And we have a generator that can support up to, in this case, a peak of about 1.5 megawatts. But if you look at the peak of PV production here, we are talking about just about uh, 0 0.6 megawatts. So in this case, uh, because you have such a high peak of load and a relatively lower peak of uh, PV production, we are calling this uh, low PV penetration because the balance of what has to be covered uh, in terms of the load requirement is coming from the diesel generator. In this case, uh, you can look at what are your potential savings because this is always important when you are proposing this kind of solution. Your PV, your diesel generator power would cost you typically 25 euro cents in that region, and PV power is costing you uh, 10 dollar uh, euro cents. So you can make a saving of about 15 euro cents for 20 percent of the power demand in this case. Um, when you look at a higher penetration uh, of PV scenario, um, we are talking about a situation whereby we have quite a possi high possible PV production of about 1.4 megawatts here, and the same load of about uh, 1.6 thereabout megawatts, and the generator is still able to meet up to 1.5 uh, megawatts in this case. Um, if we look at from the start of production of PV, which is about seven in the morning, and then if you are traced the lead line here, you come to this point where your PV is giving you about 0 0.8 megawatts or 800 kilowatts. And the balance at this point has to be covered by the diesel generator. So if you follow the gray line here or the gray portion here, you come and they meet at 800 kilowatts. So if you combine these two, you end up providing your peak load here with about 1,600 kilowatt or 1 1.6 uh, megawatts. In this case, because you have a very high PV penetration, then we recommend uh, as a necessity that a PV system controller must be incorporated in this kind of a scenario. And this basically helps you to mitigate or to prevent any backfeeding of PV power into the diesel generator. So potential savings, um, the same scenario as before, the cost of power on the diesel side is 25 euro cents. Uh, PV power is costing you still uh, 10 cents. Uh, and then because you have a lot of PV production, you have a small section here at the top where about 5% of your PV installation is not being utilized. And therefore, that is eating away on your potential savings of about uh, uh, 5 uh, cents or so. And therefore, the savings in this case, although with PV high penetration quite high, is about 14.5. But considering the total output of the PV system covering the portion of your load, then with a P higher PV penetration, then your uh, return on investment is much faster than when your PV penetration is not very high. Um, let's now look at what is the typical load curve of PV genset solution, because it's important that when you are designing this kind of a solution, you understand what kind of loads that you're going to support to make sure that or to make uh, the proper decision if it makes any sense to integrate PV into the genset uh, grid. So in this kind uh, of graph, we are looking at the dark area here, the, the, the black line here is showing you what is the load profile throughout the day. And then in red here, we are looking at what is the potential production by the PV system. So the energy provided by the genset, like I've said before, is this portion cover in gray here and then uh, what the pv needs to support you with is this area here 
So when you combine, as I said before, if you follow this line and trace, and then at the convergence point, that is what your load demands, and that is what is supported by both the PV and the genset uh, system. Um, in terms of boosting your return on investment, as I said before, uh, we have quite a number of installations. So if you also are looking at doing a PV genset installation, we have a number of already working and tested sites. So in this particular example, this is a real site that is working. So we have a system whereby we have 144 kilowatt peak of PV power installed, and the yield over the course of one year is about 237 kilowatt hours. Considering the cost of the PV system, which was about 216,000 euros, you have savings of about 35,000 euros every year. So with this kind of calculation, your amortization or the payback period or the point at which you break even will be within the sixth year. And from the seventh year onwards, then you'll be making a saving of about 59,400 euros every year. And this by any measure is not a small figure. So if you're able to work out this kind of analysis for your customers, you can then have a very good argument of integration of PV because as we saw in the in a graph a few slides before, the initial cost of PV is quite high. But if you can explain to your customer that over a period of time, after seven years or six years, there is possibility to save this amount of money every year, then the PV system becomes a winner at that point. And also considering the lifespan expected 25 to 30 years on the PV system, this is really a very nice investment for your customers from any standards. Um, looking at the PV solutions themselves, we have quite a number of them. And what we have as a, sort of a reference point in Fronius is what we call the PV Genset Easy Solution. And this particular example is showing an off-grid solution. So this, of course, uh, has a number of key parts. But uh, the most important here in this case, when your PV penetration is very high, is the PV system controller. So you're going to look at how the PV controller is functioning in very basic uh, principle. But uh, yeah, the generator in this case uh, is supporting your load. Then through the cities, the PV system controller is checking what balance of power can be supplied by the PV inverter or the Fronius inverter. The other variation of the PV genset easy is when you have a weak grid or when your grid is prone to blackouts and therefore there is a start by generator and therefore this we call grid backup. So in this case, you have an ATS or the automatic transfer switch and the automatic transfer switch also communicates to the PV system controller so that the inverters or the system controller knows what is the source of the grid that the inverters are synchronizing to. As you know, as you're going to look in, into a few slides, the generator has to be loaded at a minimum recommended output, uh, depending on the manufacturer recommendations. But when you have the supply of AC from the grid or mains grid, then that minimum loading does not come into play. Uh, so how does the system work? Uh, and this system uh, PV system solution is a solution is for low voltage uh, grids. Um, so the diesel generator is of course the source of voltage for you. And of course the Fronius inverters require the voltage and the frequency from the diesel generator for them to be able to function. Then the system controller that looks like this then is working out what is the minimum genset loading required as I've mentioned before. And this is 30%, for example, of the rated KVA of the generator. So this depends on the manufacturer's recommendations. And for you to be able to work out, therefore, what is the balance possible to be fed from the solar side, then the CTs or the current transducers are necessary to work out what is the load consumption from time to time. So once the PV system controller has worked out what is the maximum allowable uh, PV production, this is communicated to the data manager, which now allows the inverters to either scale up or scale down their PV production. 
Um, apart from the PV genset easy, we have what is called the advanced and the professional solutions. So the advanced solution has all the benefits of the easy solution. You can have as well as uh, multi genset uh, retrofit. What I can mention here quickly is that with the PV easy solution, you can also use more than one generator. But of course, the generators has, have to be perfectly in sync. That means they are switching on and off at the same time and also connected to the same AC bus bar. So the advanced uh, PV solution is independent from either low voltage or medium voltage grids, because as we've, we've seen, the easy solution is only working with low voltage uh, grids. And then the, profession, the advanced solution is also independent from which type of genset controllers are being used. And therefore, the overall benefit is that you are able to serve uh, systems that have a bit more complexity using one or two or more asynchronous generator sets. We have another variation of the PV genset solution, what we call the professional solution. And this means uh, that you can have multiple gensets in one solution. And this, for this kind of installation, the kind of controller we prefer or recommend is what is manufactured by a company known as Dive. So also with this company, we have very good working relationship and the uh, controller is very well tested for communication with the Fronius uh, data manager or the Fronius inverters. Overall uh, benefits that you get, you get everything that the advanced setup is giving you, plus the possibility that your PV installation here can be at eye level with the genset output. So you could have genset here output at two megawatts or more, and then you can also design a PV installation here at two megawatts. So for genset easy, this is not possible because it's limited to about 60 to 70 percent of the rated generator output. So let us now look at design rules for PV genset solutions. And as I've mentioned before, uh, the generator must be loaded at all times at approximately 30 percent of the rated KVA. This is, of course, unless stated otherwise by, by the manufacturer. So some manufacturers might, might say my generator can also work at a minimum loading of about 25%, but 30% of K, rated KVA is quite common with quite a number of manufacturers of generators. So maximum AC inverter power should not exceed, like I've said, 60 to 70% of the rated genset uh, KVA. And this is to make sure that you are reserving the minimum, minimum genset loading required of 30%. So size, oversizing on the, on the generator side, on the DC side is also allowed. And this also helps in areas where the irradiation is varying from time to time. And therefore, if you oversize your installation in the, on the DC side, you can have a relatively high output from the Fronius inverters, even when the irradiation is not very high. So with the Fronius inverters, as you know, I believe some of you already know that it's possible to do installations with different module orientations because our inverters have what we call the double uh, MPPTs or multi MPPTs, means that you, one of your installations, for instance, for a SOIMA 20 inverter, 10 kilowatts could be facing south, another 10 kilowatts could be facing north, and then in, inside the inverter, that system is treated as one, and therefore this helps you to smoothen out your production curve throughout the day. When you are talking about PV penetration or integration into a generator system, of course you have to think about what is the fail-safe mechanism. Fail-safe mechanism is achieved in two ways. Number one, through the Modbus communication link. Modbus is, of course, what is uh, communicating between the PV system controller and the inverter, or between the Jensen controller and the PV system controller. So if this link is broken or is not working properly, the PV production has to fall back to a fallback value that allows or that ensures that you do not have any possible backfeeding into the genset at that time. Another failsafe fail mechanism is achieved by uh, looking at if there is a failure in the Fronius Solar.net ring topology. And this is the communication between now the Fronius components. So if you have more than two inverters in one system, 
they are communicating of course through the uh, solar net ring and if, if this is broken as well you need to go to the fallback value to ensure that uh, you do not have any potential problems of PV power backfeeding into the generator. Good. So, as I mentioned before, we are now looking at uh, a few possible references that you can get from Fronius. We have one case example in Zimbabwe, and this is for a tobacco farm with a PV installation of about 45 kilowatt peak. Um, the special feature with this system is that uh, depending on the work schedule or the workload, this generator can be swapped with a slightly bigger one and uh, using the PV system controller for that kind of configuration because it allows uh, the company to save fuel because when you are running a very big generator and you don't have as many machines operating, then the saving on the fuel, does, uh, on the fuel side is not achieved. So in this installation, you have about three Fronia Simos, so making a total of 45 kilowatt peak. So you can see there is just a ratio of one to one from the PV installation to the Fronia's inverter. And this system was just commissioned this year in March of 2020. The next case example we can look at is the installation in Lebanon. Um, and this is for an irrigation uh, farm or project. The installation is actually the one that we based our return of investment calculations on. So the total installation here is 144 kilowatt peak. The generator size, slightly uh, quite big, is 280 kVA. Uh, in this case, we have six Fronia Simos, making a total of 120 kilowatt peak. So quite a bit of a sizing done here with a factor of about 120% compared to the output possible from the Fronius inverters. So um, the special feature here is the PV optimization through control and with the 40% self-sufficiency as a result of integrating this amount of PV power into the genset uh, system. Of course, uh, also environmentally, this is also a very important uh, installation because you can see the kind of CO2 savings they are making every year. And being an agricultural project, this is actually uh, quite critical and quite nice to see that they are on almost carbon neutral for their production. Good. So um, that almost brings us to the end. But before we end, let us look at how we offer you uh, support at Fronius. We do support through three main ways. We have what we call the Fronius system partners uh, that are. Uh, selling our products or distributing our products to the market. So they have stocks of our inverters, they have stocks of the necessary spare parts. And of course, one key aspect is that they receive a lot of training from us uh, through the expert uh, training uh, courses that we offer our FSPs. Regionally, we also have the technical sales advisors like myself, uh, Cyprian, and my colleague in South Africa, Mohamed Sidat. And we are able to interact with our installers, our FSPs at the local or regional levels for them to be able to advise the uh, customers properly on utilization or application of our systems. Additionally, we also have our technical support department in Austria that handles, uh, let's say, what we'd say are complex problems that you encounter on site that you're not able to resolve immediately. So you can get in touch with them through a hotline or through by sending an email that you will get addressed uh, in about a day or so and therefore this affords Fronias to offer you very customized and individual help for all the problems that you might encounter. In terms of uh, contacts, uh, if you have a need for any further details regarding this training for instance or any other materials that you require uh, for your daily work, you can get in touch with any of these departments or through uh, my other colleagues and myself as well through these details shown here and we are always very happy and eager to assist you with all the topics that you have to discuss with us so and this brings us, us now to the end of our presentation and we will be doing a brief uh, Q&A session with my colleague Cyprian just to address some of the questions that have been asked in the course of this webinar and which we have not managed to answer as so far uh, Cyprian, 